but that that heart field opening up and then I felt the same kind of um like when the filaments went down they went down and they would like open up different you know down and then more down and then more down like this exponential down and when my heart field opened up like that absolutely connected with those in the field doing this work with you that greater point all around the world and then I could feel like there exponential connections out from their heart field after that the same sort of um expansion you know it's almost like lightning bolt or tree root kind of thing yeah. and um it was so powerful so many powerful moments in in the connection yesterday oh it's it's thank you it's beautiful to hear you relate this and you know i i really trust your um your insights and 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 your intuition and and your awareness. So it's it's great to get this feedback for me because I'm watching the collective field as we're going through it, and I see what what I see, which isn't by any means the whole picture. You know, I see enough <laughs> to give me a story and to keep me satisfied and uh, and 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 um and on track in a sense. But it is really lovely to get, as I say, this this sort of feedback because. It's easy for me when I'm seeing these things to think or to dismiss them or to not uh, to not allow them to be real in a sense. You know, I think, oh, yeah, that's just me. And I, that, I might be making that up or I might be exaggerating that. But over the years, obviously, that has has lessened and quietened somewhat. But it's still a part of my internal voices. Um, and. When I see the vastness of what we are engaged in as a collective, uh, it's it's extraordinary. But but I often doubt what I'm seeing because it seems so so vast, you know. And um, so to hear you talking about it as well is is truly lovely. And I you know I see other people writing about this sort of thing on Facebook, but it, it is. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's important for us all to get the validation uh, of our intuition and our inner seeing or knowing because we've been trained out of trust yes. of this um, these deep uh, resources and they're coming back online. But it is really important that we that we come back to a level of trust. My dear friend David Manning and I got together to talk about a teleconference he had. This is that conversation. Yes. <laughs> Look at you. You're looking lovely. You're looking lovely, too. I'm recording. If there's anything we say that we want to cut out, but otherwise, I, I want to capture reconnecting with you because it's been too long. Do we even know how long it's been? No idea. No idea at all. Time is very strange. But you're looking, are you in the office then, huh? Um, well, I am not. Um, I'm in my basement, uh, but I have a little basement place and I have um, an office. It's now, uh, yeah, so much has changed since you and I have spoken. Uh, my office that I had in Augusta at a little storefront in the little town of Augusta, Kansas, I've given that up and I which is, it's all very, very interesting. Uh, it was, my last day was in January of this year. And I've moved all of my stuff to my childhood home, which is huge. I mean, so huge in a lot of different ways, practically speaking, because we're keeping it in the family now where to the nth hour, I thought maybe we weren't. Uh, but as you might, of course, understand and guess, being in that place of my making, you know, uh, we moved there when I was not quite four mm -hmm. and um, moved out when I was about 11 for a while and then came back when I was a early or young teenager. So that, that place, it means so much and it has so many energies and memories for me to both mine and dismantle it's extraordinary. I, ma I made a lot of discoveries about reality there. I've had a lot of mystical experiences there. Yeah. And um, so I'm thrilled to be back there, but I've tried to make sort of 
my background look the same. <laughs> yeah, because I was thinking oh, that looks because you had a brick wall in 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 your office. I did. You? I did. Imagine that the uh, the magic of uh, television, shall we yeah. say? <laughs> Um, actually, I mean, you know, I, maybe I shouldn't give it away, but this is actually, I mean, let me touch it a little bit. It, it's actually a, a, a backdrop. It's a paper oh. backdrop, but it's so convincing. Totally. And I got two of them. So, hey, my office is wherever I am. <laughs> That's very cool. Very cool. Oh, and how, how are you then? Well, uh, and I, please don't let me forget to hear how you are because uh, there's so much that has happened since you and I have spoken last. Um, I'm well, I've been uh, sort of wrung out, tired. A, a couple really big things have happened since you and I talked. Um, the woman who made my, my working life, my productive life possible the last three years of, you know, with my three and a half years of my dad being here, um, her name was Kim, uh, died in an accident over Mother's yeah. Day weekend. I saw that on your Facebook thing and 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 sort of yes. followed that, you know. Just so huge. I mean, not only practically speaking, but also because she was a friend, as you might imagine, yeah. somebody in my home every day. And kind of goosebumpy getting ready to say this too. It was an accident on the road. The skid marks from that accident, I still see almost every day, like when I go into town. I mean, it's it's hard to set that aside, shall we say. And mm -hmm. then my my really best horse, my Rio, my my heart horse, um, he he also died earlier this year. Lots of shifts, lots of changes, but dad's doing great. Tom's doing well. Uh you know, I'm trying to hold it together, but I have to tell you, I mean, we'll get into it a little more, but let's catch up with you first. But your event yesterday is just huge. And I, uh, for the audience who may be listening, uh, David and I tried to try to, to connect on Saturday and it, and it fell through and it was so perfect that it fell through. Yeah. It was so perfect that it fell through. We'll talk more about that, but please catch me up and catch uh, my listeners up with, with what's been going on with you. Well, it, it's strange because it feels like nothing much at all. You know, life just rolls on in the way that it does. And I live in this lovely little town on the coast um and my days are pretty pretty regular in a sense and yet most of the action in my life goes on in other dimensions in a sense so while it looks as if the surface stuff is all just bubbling along pretty much as normal you know it's it's the underlying stuff that is like oh my god this is completely wild this is completely crazy and that and at the moment I'm really being asked to and I think this is probably true for a lot of us I'm being asked to focus much much more in those other dimensions now and it's not let go of the external reality but pay be less focused in that and more focused in these inner landscapes these other um, subtle dimensions and that's the call for me that has been going on all year, you know, quite strongly. And bit by bit, I surrender more and more to that. And it's putting me in touch with, you know, that layer of my addiction, that being addicted to the external world um, rather than fully aligned with the internal, internal world. And it's like, oh, so that's, I guess that's the underlying addiction for us all, isn't it? That we're we're plugged into 3D reality and letting go of that is um, and making the other realms our primary focus is that's the big that's the big game in town in a sense. It certainly is for me. It's what's up, you know. But you know, I carry my 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 work carries on in terms of it being you know the regular teleconferences and some small workshops up in London, you know, in-person events and things like that. Um, and life feels, for the most part, very good, you know, very stable, very uh, 
yeah, very, very good. Um, I can't complain about anything at all. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's lovely. It's lovely. It's really, I mean, I can't, I still find myself, I've lived in this place, in this town since 2017, when I moved from London. And I still find, like I was down this morning, I walked the dog down to the beach, throw some stones for the dog to run around with, and then dive in for a swim, come out, sit and chat with friends on the beach. And I still pinch myself that this is, this is my reality. You know, I can't believe that I'm living at the beach still. It's such a a blessing for me and I don't understand why the whole world isn't living at the beach <laughs> to be honest I do know that some people prefer towns some people prefer mountains some people prefer prefer forests but it's like why isn't everybody just living at the beach um because yeah. your soul wants to be there look how nautical you look and speaking of where we live I have to touch base with you so imagine America imagine the American map yeah, imagine, what was the thing about Arkansas? Imagine the very, very center of the of the American map, and that's basically where I live, which is which is in Kansas. And think of it as the heartland, right in the middle. But it, but but so where did I get confused with Arkansas? Because that's where Dolores lived. She lived four hours east of me in Arkansas, right yeah. there. And by the way, we in Kansas do call the main river that comes through this town here the Arkansas River. Oh, yes. The rest of the world calls it the Arkansas River. Sorry. Kansans call it the Arkansas River. No, but I because I because seeing that word, that's how it that's how it reads, isn't it? Ar Arkansas. And that's well, how that's I, what we and I remember. I remember you laughing and just saying, no, it's Arkansas. Um, but I remember years ago probably four or five years ago, doing some energy work with you and your energy field showing me that it had expanded to hold the whole of your state. And that was a signal for me that that was what we were doing now, yeah. that not at, uh, not at a personality level, we don't do that sort sure. of stuff at a personality level, but the 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 bigger version of ourselves, our greater self, was present enough. And this, I don't know when that was, probably four or five years ago. Um, it was showing me that we were doing that, holding really big chunks of the planet's surface or the planet um, in these expanded fields of light and that more and more of us were connecting up and creating these networks and grids of light that that hold the planet. Um, and that's still obviously going on and intensifying as more people come onto the onto the radar, as it were, more people come onto the map and their um vaster multidimensional field comes into action, uh, then that creates a much stronger, ever stronger growing field of luminosity that holds the planet um, more and more steadily, I think, you know. And it it doesn't look like that because if we look at surface reality, it looks crazy and chaotic. But the fact that more and more of us are doing this work or our higher selves are doing the work through us because we have become available at the physical personality level, uh, then... Um, that pushes the crazy to the surface in a sense, you know. <laughs> so, um, so that's that's what we get to to watch. Um, and that's oh, what we boy. get to see playing out in 3D. Huh? I can't believe you've been there since 2017, really. Amazing, isn't because it? we must have we must have known each other a couple of years to three years before that. And it just it's amazing how long we've been friends. What a what a blessing. I do want to talk about that. I, you know, I'm thinking of the whole concept of homing pigeons though, you know, you or you're like, why doesn't everyone live here? It's because you're home, you know, you're home, home, home. And for me, the prairie grasses and the sunset and the clouds and the sky. And I know that in terms of the general population, far more people are excited about mountains and oceans than they are about uh, prairie lands. But for me, this is where where my homing self sits in and goes, oh my gosh, yes, this is where I want to be. This wide open space. Something about that line, that line between the earth and sky, which is so available here where we live. And yes, I've got 
rolling <laughs> spaces. It's not well, flat as a pancake, as a lot of people say. But um, in general, take yourself out on that ocean away from the coast and it becomes quite flat too. And that line appears again, uh, you know, between, between the earth and sky, but your, I want to plug your conference again uh, for anybody who has not experienced this, you know, head back maybe and catch the replay of, of this conference and I'll let you name it again because at first you said connection to animals but then you said no really the earth spirits but I've got so much to to tell you about what happened with me personally but what did you end up titling it for people to go look for it if they do so after listening to us speak well so I've I've left the title as it was because how the teleconferences work for me um and the teleconferences are, are basically a piece of collective energy work that I um, I don't know what the word is, facilitate, I guess. And the information usually starts to come in midweek or something. And then I, I start to make notes and write it down and create a Zoom, um, a Zoom uh, gathering and put that link out so that people can, can register for that. So I have to have a title, you know, early on. And it was because I'd seen doing energy work with individuals. I had seen the extraordinary way now this has always been a part of the work i do because there's there's quite a shamanic or the well yeah sort of a shamanic element to to the work and animals will often come in to lend their energy in a session to remind the energy field of the person the client um something that, that it's forgotten so often a bear will come in to remind us of often the bear is about mothering and deep strength and again deep all of the animals are about a deep earth connection um and just as the native american tradition all of the animals have a di they're a different pattern of energy and when they come in like a crystal coming in it reminds the energy field of something it may have temporarily forgotten and helps to restore that and um Last week, there were a lot of animals coming in. I could see the, the huge whales coming in and just lifting layers out of people's energy fields. And then the elephants were coming and doing the same sort of thing. And I was thinking, wow, look at this. So I knew that I was being shown that animals were coming in to lend their support to our dismantling process. And I, I have known from my own animal communications that the animals have been looking at us thinking thinking we're crazy how come we as a race have forgotten the deep connectedness that they live with um and they look at us seeing that we're we've forgotten that knowing that we should be a part of that but understanding that we have forgotten and they they're confused by us often because we don't have that deep connectedness to the earth that they live by and that's how they navigate and move by and you know all sorts of things of course we're coming back to that hopefully more and more of us are coming back to that connection but um when i sat to so i wrote a newsletter about it and i called it um something like the animals lend their support or something like that. I uh, can't quite remember. I never remember after the event, it's gone. It gets wiped out. <laughs> sure, uh, I get it. <laughs> and, uh, and then when I sat to write a second newsletter, um, as soon as I sat, I understood a whole different level of this, that this wasn't just the animals lending their support. It was the whole of the natural world. And it wasn't about them lending their support. It was literally about all of the vast layers of collective karma that we have built up over thousands of years between humanity and the natural world. And it was time, it's time for that to dissolve um, because it's a huge burden in the energy fields of humanity, but also in the the planetary collective you know um so the earth was wanting to shift it she ends up holding a lot of our collective stuff um and it was time for this whole field to dismantle and it, it's a bit confusing because of course there are many many people and many situations on the planet where it's obvious that is going to continue you know the 
the way corporations are and the rules and laws that governments make and the way that individuals behave mean that karma is still being created with between individuals and animals and the natural world and corporations and governments. And, and we all share a bit of responsibility in that because we are a collective. Um, but there was an opportunity for individuals to shed any remaining karma locked into their systems over from, from their vast evolutionary trajectory on this planet um, with animals, with the waters of the world, with the air, with with the earth, the plant kingdom, the whole, the, the nature spirits, the whole lot. And, um, and I was just staggered by the immensity of this, how extraordinarily vast this <laughs> this is but but we are moving through times now where the dismantling is 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 on epic scales isn't it it's just yeah. extraordinary and luckily for the most part we don't we don't understand that. We don't get to it. We would be totally overwhelmed if we saw what goes on in these other dimensions. I think a lot of us get tiny little glimpses. Um, but if we saw the work that is happening to set us free, in effect, um, we would be completely uh, and utterly amazed, you know. And this, these things, these big shifts happen by the force of grace, not by the force of individuals and you know human beings it's not at that level it's the force of grace coming in and saying okay it's time to shift this block of the collective programs that have been laid down over long long periods of time and so that's what we do and on a teleconference there's you know yesterday i think 110 people had signed up and all over the world so we create a planetary field and because i've been doing this for a long time that field that field is a is a is a well well worked field, as it were, and it um, there are always a vast gathering of beings that join with us to 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 facilitate the work. We show up; they need human bodies on the planet to show up and be willing, and then the work happens for us and through us and with us because we're willing, you know, because we show up and are willing and those other dimensions and realms are always really grateful for us showing up. Um, but really what we receive because we show up is always, um, is always vast. I think is always immense. And, uh, and yesterday's work felt really, really beautiful to me. And it, it, it did make me laugh because as we were, I can't remember at one stage we were starting off and a zebra just came into my, into my body, into my field. It just had its, its head over here and it just was nudging me with it and it just made me laugh so much and i've had some experiences in a, at a time in africa w with a zebra um a reasonably tame zebra uh doing that and it just reminded me of that it was pushing its way in it, that time it was nudging it's nudging me looking for food um this time it was just nudging me saying we're here we're here um so it was really uh really really lovely so, but how, so you said you had some experiences that you oh, wanted to Oh, I have, uh, you know, yeah. I'm so glad we started an hour earlier than what we were going to start, because I actually have an appointment a little bit later, and it would have been hard to even talk, and, and thank you for making time to connect with me, by the way, this morning. Oh, it's um, lovely. It's lovely to see you. It really I, is. I got to... I got to have a pre-experience for your, for your conference. I got to have the conference experience, and then I had the dreams of just last night. I mean, you know, it's early in the morning here. I just woke up a little while ago from an extraordinary dream. So let me let me start in in order. The dreams I had the night before were all about uh, being on the ground in uh, Africa and walking the planet barefoot. And at one point I was walking with hundreds. And as I say that, my little newest little kitten just ran by going. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, he may, may show up and uh, say hello at some point. But I was walking with hundreds of lions, but not just lions. They were uh, 
they were female lions. Every single one of them was a female and we were all going in the same direction and they were all on uh, this side of me, which is my right side at the moment. But we were all, we had, we had our eye on some destination and we were going and we were walking and some of what the imagery that was going on there became apparent how that applied during the, the teleconference. But even during the dream, I realized there was, and, you know, people in our community will use this uh, phrase sometimes in a nefarious sort of uh, way, as in applied by you know, negative forces, shall we say, and I'm not going to say how this was uh, manufactured, but I, I absolutely felt a frequency fence. Like there was, and it may have just been monofilaments. Uh, and some of this could be from my own life. Like right now I'm redoing my chicken coop and, and I'm going to put uh, just a few high monofilaments over their yard to deter birds of prey that really are not visible or noticed by those of us on the ground. But this frequency fence was, you know, my shoulder was right up next to it. But the lions, I felt their power. I could smell their breath. Anyone who knows cats knows, knows, knows animals, knows that there's a, there's a breath. There's a a particular uh, smell to a cat. There's a particular smell to a dog. A lot of it comes from their coat and their dander, but some of it comes literally from their breathing. And it was very feline uh, breath, Uh, but, but their feet on the ground, their feet and my bare feet on the dust and dirt of, I don't know, it might have been sub-Saharan Africa where we were. But some of that, and I'm getting goosebumps as I'm getting ready to tell you uh, about the part that became the aha moment there was in your teleconference, you talked about us carrying ancestral karma with the natural world and with, with the animals. And some of that scene that I just described had to do with that. So mm-hmm. I was walking like as a representative of my own, and you even used the word string of bodies. Mm-hmm. It was such a, it was a beautiful phrase in your conference uh, throughout the past with all of these animals. And, um, and the phrase in my own world was there's a reason I'm tired to the bone. You know, we we use that phrase, humans, don't we? Tired to the bone. And and some of it, you know, I think to myself, well, that's because I've got the farm and I've got the animals and I've got my dad who is really, dad needs, he, he's still fairly self-sufficient, but you can't leave dad alone. You know, it's either me or somebody else who's with dad. It's just all there is to it. That's the way life is right now. Um, so no wonder, you know, even overnight, that's my shift, right? Overnight. So I don't really get to disconnect unless somebody else is taking, uh, taking over and I'm typically working or being productive. But during your conference, there were so many wonderful things, so many wonderful things. But one of them was when you talked about um, uh, the sacrum. And in my experience at first <laughs> at first I was laying flat like flat I'm out in my hayfield by the way <laughs> with the grasses listening listening to you live and I'm putting my heart against the heart of the planet you know I'm connecting my heart with the earth heart but right and then I'm like okay I don't want to lay that way anymore I'm, I'm turning myself over and yes I had some padding out there I turn myself over and I'm flat on my back right as you're talking about uh, the sacrum and imagining these filaments, right? And yeah. immediately they out of my sacrum come all of that, but, and then they, um, uh, uh, an infinity sy- symbol ma- manifests itself in the sacrum, you know, the two sides of it. And then the filaments go down, go down into the planet and, some of that heaviness, that tiredness to the bone uh, was released, dispersed, and then 
returned back, you know, as as debris or as uh, flotsam or jetsam or whatever to the planet during during your session. It was, there was there's so much more here, but I'm going to stop at the moment. And just just let you speak to any of that, because every time you would say something, something would manifest either in my body or right in front of me with with exactly what you were talking about. That's wild, isn't it? That's gorgeous yeah. to hear you talk about that. The lions, I years ago, I, I have a team of lion-headed beings that are guides for for me, for the work that I do. But I think they, they're planetary guides in a sense because they tell me that they, um, and these are the lion-headed beings we know from Egypt. The goddess, um, she's not a goddess actually. She's a she's a she's a very powerful being, but. Sekhmet we we know and she's a female uh lion-headed being the, the daughter of Ra the sun god um and they tell me that they are architects and designers and geneticists and they kickstart life on a planet when it becomes ready to host the experiment of of life um they bring dna from all over the cosmos to a planet one of the teams i'm sure there are others too so their dna is wound in with our dna they're part of our what i call deep ancestry um cosmic ancestry and of course there are many other strands and races of beings that have um have a dna imprint you know a dna print on this planet through uh through human form um so it always intrigues me when lions show up in this way because they represent the heart for us uh they represent the sun they represent majestic power um and extraordinary grace um but there's also this 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 amazing intelligence with with the race of cat beings, um, all of them in effect, and uh, and so it's it's wonderful hearing of you walking with hundreds of lionesses because I think that speaks very much to, you know, the rise of 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 well the rise of feminine power in a sense yep. on the planet, um, and I think that's. That's that's the, this is the time we're in. It's not that it's going to come into the ascendancy, but there is going to be that we are in this time of really beautiful balancing. And it feels crazy um, as things come to the balance. And we're also in the season of balancing because we're heading, you know, just over a week away from the equinox, which is very much about planetary balance. Um, so it it seems really, really appropriate. And this thing about the the filaments of light. I had seen this again last week with somebody in a way that I had never seen before. We were um, working through her spine and all of a sudden her coccyx and sacrum opened up and hundreds and hundreds of filaments of light just dropped down into the earth and spread out. In a, and I thought, wow, I've never seen that before. And so I mentioned it on the teleconference, knowing when I'm mentioning it, again, I'm, I sort of move into a space where it's not that I'm it, it is a sort of channel process but I'm still very present as David but there's a lot just you know I don't really question what I'm doing what I'm seeing it happens and then I tend to forget about it afterwards but the filaments of light I think it's a new I think there's been enough clearing through the collective spine and the nervous system that there's another way in which high frequency energies flow through us into the planet yeah. and yes. plug in anchor in it's a um yeah it it just seemed like a very beautiful very natural thing that was ready to happen now um and so for anybody listening that thinks oh <laughs> that feels intrigued by that you could just drop into your spine and drop down into the sacrum and the coccyx and ask your higher self ask your team if this is ready to happen for me if it's appropriate let's do it you know and just see what happens because that's it's not that i'm doing any of this i i sort of witness what happens and um talk about stuff and it acts as a 
an instigator in a sense, you know, that the field that we have worked with for years now uh, holds an awful lot of information and energy that supports people through their process. So it's lovely to hear you speak about this in, in this way. And, you know, at the end of every teleconference, I ask, OK, let me know how you get on with this. Write, drop me an email and tell me hardly yeah. anybody ever writes. You right. know, make two or three emails of saying, oh, this happened, this happened, which is always great for me because it's very helpful, yeah. but not much at all. So it is lovely to um to have this conversation. So thank you. Oh, so I much. have more. I have <laughs> more. Great. I have so much for well, you know, not only personally, but for me and my own community of healers, and then you know, our extended clients after that, right? So I, I see so many connections. When when the whole thing happened with the coccyx and the filaments of light, to me, and I, I don't want to make it sound crass or anything to say this, but it really reminded me of like flushing a toilet. I mean, it was just like it wasn't a gradual going through. It was boom, like like, and it and it was very much uh, like we'd been holding some of these things within us, and then when the lights came in, down, and through, the light went oh time to let that go now. And it made the connection. And then it all kind of coalesced at that place and then went down and out. I don't know about you, but as long as I've ever done this work, you, you will hear people complain about, a, you know, a being bone weary, tired, you know, part, I already mentioned that, but being tired, but I'm seeing scads of people even on the periphery people I don't know uh saying the same thing I just don't know why I can't get out of bed I just seem so tired I seem so tired I don't know where this is coming from where's this coming from and for me all of this was um a way to release some of that some of that and it very much felt gravity driven like gravity driven which really points to what you're talking about. Some of the work that we are doing here is because we've got the 3D heavy physical uh, has to deal with gravity body, right? I mean, this is, it's, it's a, it's a transformational catalyst kind of, it's not only for us, but it is for our ancestors. It is for humanity. I mean, we are doing, <laughs> We're doing a lot here. You know, sometimes you think, oh, I'm not being productive enough or I barely got anything done today or what's even going on here. But even just standing upright, uh, you know, you're really, yeah. Yeah, you're really <laughs> accomplishing you're accomplishing something, but um, I want to go back and for that's a because moment. Because you're somebody that doesn't stop from one day to uh, the next. You so much in a day. You amaze me. But this this well, filaments of light, as you were talking, I understood something. It's like this teleconference was about, um, you know, the weight of karma that we have accrued as, as individuals and a collective sits between us and the natural world, in a sense, as a veil, yes. as yes. a veil of guilt, shame. Because whenever we've done something wrong, you know, the personality level may be um, may be cruel, may be uh, dissociated, whatever. But at a deep soul level, we always know what we've done and that we might have harmed another being, another creature, a nature spirit, a tree, a plant. And we might have done that needlessly. And that sits as a weight in our field. Um, and it creates a separation, another layer it might be infinitesimally fine, these layers of separation, but when they accumulate and accumulate and accumulate, it ends up being a huge, dense fabric of separation. And the time we are in is very much about dismantling the whole structure of separation so that we understand and realize uh, our deep connect activity our con deep connectedness with all of life and so this dropping through um the spine and out of the 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 sacrum or coccyx of these filaments of light is a restatement i think of a connection that we have used to have we used to have um but is now ready and available to come back online for us because there's been enough clearing of the uh, 
that dense fabric of separation that I talked about. And so, and I only just, you know, as you were talking, I only just saw that. And so it always reminds me of the, the value of talking about your experiences, sharing your experience, because it may trigger awareness in somebody else, you know, that you have mm. no idea. And so thank you for that again, because it's, it is very helpful. Trigger is the perfect word. You know, again, usually trigger is used in the other way, right? But that's what I love about you so much, both in our personal conversations, the one we have publicly like this, and the ones when you uh, do your teleconference. You know, sometimes I feel like you're talking just to me. (laughs) I mean, I know there's all those other people out there, and I do connect in their field, but I really do connect to your voice and what and what you are saying. And even before the release, and when I was laying on my belly uh, with my heart against uh, the planet and how much I love the world and how much I love being outside. And I have a beautiful uh, surprise caregiver for the last few days who was here yesterday, allowed me to be outside all day long. Um, who's here right now, allowing me to do this work, but it was kind of a surprise. Uh, I I didn't know she was going to be available for, to allow me to do all of this. But when I was laying with my chest on the ground and you were talking about, you know, the planet and the love for the planet and the connect, and, you know, of course, all of that. And I love the earth and I'm such an outdoor person. And, but you know what, something happened yesterday and i don't know if it's cheesy or or what and maybe it's even the words aren't quite right so take take it with a grain of salt but when when i was doing that i've i've always known i loved the earth but at that moment i was like in love i was like in love with the earth it, it was an expansion that my heart just went oh I mean, my heart field just opened up and there's something if we have time at at some point when we finish like we ever would finish talking about any of these experiences, but there's a heart field experience I would love, love to share with you that's separate from this. But I was like, it was actually a little silly, like, you know, here I am the human and I'm in, in love with the earth. And part of me is laughing inside, but part of me that set that judgment aside, the laughing aside, just looking at it from this new tweaked perspective, opened my heart in this giant, giant, so profound way, so invigorating way. And then later with the coccyx um, taking the stuff out, I actually, I am so energized. I'm so, I've gotten like some energy uh, returned to me that has, let's say been MIA for a while with, with, the big losses of my early, of my early year. And actually I lost a cat just last Tuesday. Now my Nikki, my beautiful Nikki was part of some of this feline stuff. He was 23. Um, Let's just say we knew it was coming. (laughs) You know, he was, he was in a, you know, his contained area, but he ate like a champ and he was still my sweetheart. And I took care of him. I mean, he was quite, he was another, a uh, very high maintenance creature, you know, when, when they get that old, uh, it's certainly high maintenance, but I bet he was part of this feline connection, release, setting free uh, energy, uh, giving back, but that, that heart field opening up. And then I felt the same kind of um, like when the filaments went down, they went down and they would like open up different, you know, down and then more down and then more down like this exponential down. And when my heart field opened up like that, absolutely connected with those in the field, doing this work with you, that greater point all around the world. And then I could feel like their exponential connections out from their heart field after that, the same sort of um, expansion, you know, it's almost like lightning bolt or tree root kind of thing. Yeah. And, um, it was so powerful, so many powerful moments in, in the connection yesterday. Oh, it's, it's, thank you. It's beautiful to hear you relate this. And, you know, I, I really trust your, um, your insights and, and, and your intuition and, and your awareness. So it's, it's great to get this feedback for me because, 
I'm watching the collective field as we're going through it, and I see what what I see, which isn't by any means the whole picture. You know, I see enough <laughs> to give me a story and to keep me satisfied and uh, and 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 um and on track in a sense. But it is really lovely to get, as I say, this this sort of feedback because it's easy for me when I'm seeing these things to think or to dismiss them or to not. Uh, to not allow them to be real, in a sense. You know, I think, oh, yeah, that's just me, and I, that, I might be making that up or I might be exaggerating that. But over the years, obviously, that has, has lessened and quietened somewhat, but it's still a part of my internal voices. Um, and when I see the vastness of what we are engaged in as a collective, uh it's it's extraordinary but but i often doubt what i'm seeing because it seems so so vast you know and um so to hear you talking about it as well is is truly lovely and i you know i see other people writing about this sort of thing on facebook but it, it is um yeah it's it's uh it's important for us all to get the validation uh of our intuition and our inner seeing or knowing because we've been trained out of trust yes. of this um these deep uh resources and they're coming back online but it is really important that we that we come back to a level of trust uh because these are going to be our major tools of navigation. We're in a world now where we don't know what's true and what isn't. You know, what right. it's going to be very difficult to find truth in the external world. Anything can be fabricated now. Anything, anybody can deny anything because they can say, oh, well, it's 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 deep fake, it's a it's a it's an AI concoction. Your system, your heart will be able to tell you what is true for you and what is valid for you, what is real for you, what it is you need to be paying attention to. But we need to be in touch with that and we need to be deeply trusting of that so that it can guide us through what is going to become an increasingly confusing um, quagmire of of this version of reality. And um, so to get validation in this way is is really really important in terms of learning to trust you know so um so thank you and if for anybody listening I, I spent years in uh psychic development okay five or six years in a place in london called the college of psychic studies which was superb for me because i was i had no self esteem this was going back over 30 years now 35 years or no self esteem no <laughs> no um no grounding not much going on at all other than this strong intuition but the process of learning to trust it was vital you know and that's a deepening process still for me um mm -hmm. so if anybody is looking to or is feeling their uh, intuition expanding then find ways to get validation and it may be you know, there are millions of online courses and classes that are available and that can be a really useful thing doing it in person is also really useful so if you get the chance to go to workshops with people that are more experienced um or attend courses in person that sort of thing is really invaluable i think in learning to develop and open and trust uh, the whole field of your intuition, which is expanding exponentially for us all now. So, um, yeah, I would really encourage that for anybody that is uh, that is listening to this. If you need it, huh? you may be way, way, way ahead of me on that already. So <laughs> in which case, disregard everything I've said. <laughs> You've been so instrumental for me. I mean, you know, you're... Um, a approach to feeling and moving energy through the body has um it's really informed my work and um you know bqh 
has a large component of feeling energy in the body and you're, you know, again, your influence. And for those people out there practicing quantum healing of any kind, but especially BQH, um, pay attention to David's got a lot of offerings. Uh, a lot of them are very free and available on his site. So, so go check that out. We'll put, put links below. I want to tell you about my dream last night. So yeah. Candice is a world-class dreamer for anybody that is listening oh. and doesn't already. She dreams, well, you dream for the collective, don't you, in, in a I, sense? And uh, it's, very often, yes. Very, very often. I want often. to say that that's a real, a really important skill at this time that may, is coming online for many people. And again, the process of learning to trust your dreams and that they might be significant for you or for a wider um have a wider field of significance that's that's an important thing to uh to trust i'm not a world-class dreamer i usually don't remember dreams and then occasionally i'll have a dream that is bright and clear and very direct guidance but normally i don't remember too much at all but, but that's because you can enter into that in the waking state it is yeah, yeah. It is. and we i mean i could do a whole show on that but um thank you and sometimes i think can i enter that in the waking state Yes, but when it comes into a dream, I don't have most of the time, you know, the personality conscious mind throwing shade the whole time. Like you can't, that's not your make, you know, the whole judgment thing. So I love these dream packets <laughs> that come like that because, it, uh, you know, it, it, it comes usually minus any of that. So in this particular dream, and for those of you who I, I am. I'm in. I've got an outline for a course on dreaming. But um, here's one thing I can say right now: uh, you know, just stepping into the dreaming world can be ripe um, with information. But those last, last dreams, those last dreams, the early morning dreams for me are huge, huge, huge. And this one, so I just woke up from it. Oh, I don't know, about three hours ago. So three. <laughs> A little more than three hours it's ago. Fresh. I woke up. It's fresh. Yes, it's so fresh. <laughs> and I'm just so uh, amazed at it. Okay. So to have two dreams in a row on the same subject is extraordinary, even for me. I do have some serial dreams and a couple that are have been on pause waiting for me to rest up and take care of other stuff. I know that. They're just sitting over here. It's like a, it's like a a variety series or a TV show the episode, and I'm I'm sitting over there, and I just I need to get back to that one, but I you know haven't done that yet. But but for and this do you evening, make do you make notes when you wake up of your dreams? I really really try. Them? I really try, but you know sometimes Dad's walker is clanking as I go, and my day, I, you know, I have I have a few things around. I do try. Mostly, I just try to replay it while I'm making coffee for him and putting cat food and dishes. And I, I try to stay in it here so that I can get back to it. And I lose a lot of it. And it's just true. I, it's just true. But, um, you know, we'll get back to it. I, I know. I, I know. And you're very good at this, too, stepping back into a dream. I remember once you and I talking about it and I was like, there was this thing about the sun. And you were like, well, just step back into that dream right now, right now while you're awake. And that was years ago. And while I'd been thinking about the dreams, I'd ha I hadn't thought about the idea. And now I've done that in my in my own work with clients, very much stepping back into a dream, either within a hypnosis session or just a consulting session. I find, I find it valuable. As long as you can take away the idea that you're going to do anything wrong, you'll be fine. <laughs> you'll just be fine. So in this dream, uh, I'm suddenly aware that I'm I'm in this dream and I, it's, it's completely dark. I mean, it is dark and I can smell and I'm smelling the salt and where I am that where the connection to, and I think we talked, we might've talked about this, David, gosh, it's been so long. Uh, I headed toward, I uh, headed to a, a salt cave museum here in Kansas uh, early, earlier this year. I think it might've been February of this year, maybe March, something along that long line. And it was right as I was losing my horse. I lost my horse the day after the experience of going to the salt mine. But you go six stories down into the earth, which is not 
you know, for a girl who likes wide prairies and big skies, you know, to go down in an elevator down into six stories down into the planet and talking to the dude, you know, as we're going down, is there a way out? No, this is it. He says, this is the elevator. This is, this this is the one, you know, and you're thinking, so if something goes wrong with this thing, anyway, you know, you really had to take some of that very animalistic fear and just set it aside to be able to, I have to tell this on Tom. Uh, Tom went. He didn't like it. He didn't want to go. And you know what, though, David, he walked the whole time. He was quiet. He was circumspect. He was glad he went. He'll never go back. I don't know that I will. I might. The whole time he was down there, David, he walked like this. He was like off kilter, like the whole time. And it wasn't like, I mean, it was cavernous. There was plenty of space. He walked like this the whole time, something like completely uh, and he didn't oh, talk he much either. Gravity. He was like, that was so weird being down there. I'm like, yeah, watching you walk like, like this was very odd. Anyway, in my dream, I am in this uh, or a salt cavern like that. And by the way, so this is a 250 million year old salt seabed. This is when Kansas and the whole internal part of America was covered with this ancient ocean. So that's where I am down there, you know, and in this salt bed and they do craziest things down there. People get married down there. They run a 5k race down there. I mean, I'm telling you the place is huge. Yeah. Can you believe it? It's like we do a 5k race every summer down here. I'm like, you do what? But it must, is it cool? It must be cool. Yeah? It's exactly right. It's so cool and it's dry and it's all that. But I, I'm sorry that just to connect to this idea of running. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyway, um, so I'm in this in my dream now, in my dream again. So we're in my dream and I can't see anything because there's it's and when it's when you're down that far, you, you know, you really know what dark is if, if the lights go off. You know, there's there is nothing, which is a little terrifying, again, for, for people like us who live on the outside surface of the planet. But I'm in there and I see there's a little bit of light coming from far off, but not much. And I'm hearing shuffling and I'm hearing walking and I'm hearing movement. And you know what I'm hearing, David? I'm hearing elephants Mm -hmm. and I'm hearing elephants and I know they're elephants and I'm um, not quite aware that it's, I mean, it's not a lucid dream, not a lucid dream yet. It becomes one, but it's not a lucid dream yet. All I know is I'm underground. um, I'm by elephants. Elephants are very, very big Mm -hmm. and I'm very, very small. And I'm wondering where they are and I'm trying to make sure that I'm in the correct place uh, to not just be stepped on like a bug, uh, by these elephants. And I'm so amazed at hearing their, again, the breath, the breathing and the, and all of that. And they're moving and they're moving and they're coming around and they stop. And this big shuffling sound comes out around the corner and the lights comes up a little bit. And it is a baby elephant. Mm. And this baby elephant, which is huge, but still, and I looked it up this morning, how much do baby elephants weigh? So a newborn baby elephant is something like 200 to 250 pounds. The baby elephant in my dream space was about half that size, but that's still my size. (laughs) That's as big as I am. It's a little more compact, but it was like this great big dog and it came around the corner and it saw me and it leapt on me kind of like a big dog and its little trunk was everywhere and it was putting its trunk and it was like you've come down here to play with me and at that point it became lucid at that point I remembered going through the experience with you yesterday and then we began conversing and you know where this all came from David it came from your image. You put an, an eye of an elephant mm-hmm. as the image to your teleconference. And I found myself staring at that eye. And of course, even though it didn't happen in the conference yesterday, I made a connection through the collective, the elephant collective, right? And then in my dream, 
I was able, I know this for a fact, I was able to go that far down into the planet, into time, past all of my uh, lines, you know, my string of lives as I go down, because all those filaments had gone down yesterday. And I'm down under there with this little baby elephant. And he's like, you've forgotten about playing and we're here to play and let's just play. And his little silly trunk was just, and he was be bopping and bouncing everywhere. And like the other elephants stood at a distance, they finally came into and they just watched. They were like matronly, protective, again, very female, uh, just letting the baby play with me while I was in uh, this ancient seabed. And while we were playing, one more thing, um, the tired to the bone concept came back into my awareness. And then I watched. I watched as every bone in my body and you know, again, we're we're in the sea, right? We're in we're in the the salt beds. Every bone in my body had, and I know because you you live right there, and anyone who's been around, you know what barnacles are. <laughs> barnacles will go on to just, and they just like, and my bones were full of a barnacle like uh, layer. And every time the elephant squealed or I played or his silly little trunk was coming up into my hair or whatever like that, and I'm watching that stuff slough off my bones and and into the ground there, helping me to release some of my tiredness. I think that's so beautiful, isn't it? That really is. Yeah. Really is. And there's so many layers to that, aren't there? But, you know, the, this thing of the importance of play you know we forget on this planet we grow up and we grow away from our childhood and yet that still exists within all of us and it's lovely that it takes an animal to remind us of that and it, like I said at the beginning the animals will come into a healing session because they hold an energy and information that we have forgotten about and there the elephant comes to you to remind you to play and again, we're in a time where we're being encouraged to to be very frightened, to be very serious. Things are locking down and locking down. And all of these, we're also in a time where there is more artificial intelligence is in its infancy. And I have been alerted a lot recently to the fact that we need to pay attention to artificial intelligence and nanotechnology because it will anchor itself into our system and draw energy off locking us into low frequency spaces and it's like you're saying those barnacles um anchored into your skeleton all of those encrustations fall away when we don't take ourselves or life too seriously um and the frequency of joy is a really, really important frequency for us to remember, for us to hold and for us to broadcast, because we're being encouraged out of that into, into frequencies of fear. So to hold the frequency of true natural joy is, is a huge service to yourself, to your body, to yourselves, but also to the wider collective. It really is. And that this... Salt, um, and I know this every time I swim, salt, more than clear water, it draws out yes. um, toxicity from your system in a way that uh, that regular water doesn't, you know. And so the salt is, but it is that thing of going back into your ancient timelines and cleaning mm -hmm. the way through, isn't it? So that's that's superb isn't it and, and dreams i think are always multi-layered they're never just about the surface presentation and um and yeah that's that's beautiful i think that's really lovely thank you so much for for sharing that when they came when it came off of me when the barnacles the heaviness the debris came off it it came off in a you know around me like a 
a, a kind of a circular pattern, like, you know, like a tree would dr drop leaves or whatever. And, and it came down and it seemed very significant to me that this was happening that deep within the planet and that um, it seemed to connect through those timelines, right? It's like here, here you can drop this and it will show you basically what it was showing me too. looking down at that was showing the um, the worth of the journey, like the value of all of the different lives and that there was a returning and a completion. And it was it was just glorious um, in, in combination with. I woke up just absolutely just thrilled and 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 for whatever reason, at first, my left hip wasn't working when I got up out of bed. Uh, I walked it off and everything, but as I was walking it off, I realized that there, you know, for me to hips can be very much uh, about birth, but also about grief, you know, and, and it was a very left-sided focused thing. And it was just, I was, I was, it was the remnants of, um, you know, it was kind of like the, the soreness of carrying it there. Right. And I walk, it's, it's completely gone now, but when I've took my first few steps this morning. It was like, why the heck is my hip sore? It wasn't sore at all when I went to bed, but I think it was part of that. I think a big, and you know, I used to call my whole issue with my body, my left disease, because I, I carried so much on the left side of my body, very much about past, very much about female. Speaking of, you know, those female lions were on the right. It was very, very, you're, we're on the right, bringing that balance back, right? You know, the the female balance over on, on onto this side. Do you have time What's to stick around a little bit more after we finish talking about this? I want to tell you about my other heart field experience. I do, I do. But I wanted to say, you know, this thing of going back in time, the earth as a symbol and in a sense, everything is symbolic, you know. And again, what one of the important things that's being shown to me um, now is that there is there's no delineation between the inner and outer anymore. So what you're experiencing in your outer reality is is the same as what's going on in our inner reality, um, and so. The earth holds huge, huge fields of collective energy for primarily for the human, um, the human collective. We have dumped into our collective unconscious vast amounts of energy that is taking us a long time to, to move through, to process through. And one of the a technique in healing, particularly with landscapes um, or working with landscapes, where there's been a damaging human imprint on a landscape, a, a piece of land, is to go underneath, drop through that imprint to a time before there was a human imprint in that land and bring that back to the surface. And you can do that in your body too. Um, you just drop through the field of the body deeper into the, into the body and you're coming back to the blueprint levels and bringing that, surfacing that again. And I think it's that that you're doing, going back to the the natural animalistic heart connection, isn't it? That we get trained out of yeah. through the emphasis of the importance of the intellect, um, which is that masculine dominance. And play would be the feminine heart energy coming back into, to bring it all back into balance. So it is uh, it is lovely, it really lovely. Well, it's just so valuable, and I can't tell you how much I needed it and how much it has informed uh, my work going forward in where it is at this time. Um, well, I'm so glad you were able to uh, to do that and and to 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 be on the teleconference. It was lovely seeing your your comments there. That was um, that was really uh, really very sweet. I so, had to. I tell you what. I had to draw. I actually got. I I took. A vehicle and I drove around as <laughs> I'm doing this all over the looking for I was looking for two bars as, of a signal on my phone because I didn't want to lose you I, I, I did lose you one time anyway uh when when my phone got too hot which is really strange because it wasn't that hot oh speaking of there was a couple other things that happened during the conference that were just so perfect you were like 
and suddenly um the the sun uh, i want to connect to the sun now i have this thing it's called um it's actually the the product's called sans bug it's it's this pop up nylon tent it's a one person it's just this thing and it keeps like a you know a mosquito or a fly or something from from getting on me and i often take it with me when i go out into the woods for meditation so that the insects, which we just actually don't have enough of, please come mm. back insects. But, you know, I <laughs> seem to attract the, the ones that are there. Um, so I have this tent, but I've had it for so many years. It has plenty of holes. There's plenty of holes in this tent. And uh, the very top of the tent has a, a even though it, it has a little barrier for a little bit of sun and a little bit of moisture control, although it's still very, very thin nylon. And um, I'm laying on my back at this point and you say something like, I want to connect to the sun. And right as you say that, the sun goes and it goes right into a hole that's on the tent. And, and like, it's like, dee, 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 dee. and it like came down. It's like, are you kidding me? Right as he says, sun, the whole, the whole experience for me, it was so beautiful because then at another time you were like, oh, the hawks are coming in. And at that point I had a hawk I also had vultures. Uh, the, the vultures were sort of overtaking the hawk, but but that was happening in my skies when you were talking about the hawks. If you know, my point in even sharing this is saying these connections, like these, these magical connections, connections I know go on way more than we even realize. Right? Yeah. Yeah. They're there. Uh, you have to start looking for them and and acknowledging that they're possible. And when you start doing that, you invite more in. You will see more of this they if just you give up. yourself that time. It's totally, isn't it? It is. It is. And I'm always because people are always writing to me and saying, "Oh, I was feeling exactly what you were talking about yeah. two seconds before you mentioned it." You yeah. know, and yeah. all I'm doing on a teleconference is is feeling the field. So I'm I'm an agent of the field in a sense, and I'm talking about what I'm perceiving in the field. And the field shows me things that will resonate with the collective. And it isn't my it isn't me doing it. We we co-create this together, us and the huge teams of beings that gather um to support this work in in these other dimensions. And you really get to sense that and to feel them showing up with I go through a, a whole series of invitations inviting different uh different realms to come into the field and hold the field and each invitation you feel the energy shift as the crystalline kingdom comes in as the metallic kingdom comes in as the angels come in it's it it is um but I love this thing of so so often it happens that people will say to me just before you were talking about the energy moving in this particular way or this happening i would that's exactly what i was experiencing and before you started talking about hawks what i was seeing flying above you in your energy field was a group of hawks riding the air currents and circling higher that might have been the vultures and vultures are a huge um they have a bad press, don't they, the vultures? But they're they clean up fields. debris. They clean okay. up debris. And they're huge fields of, of ancient wisdom in their own yeah. way. They really are. They don't look the prettiest birds, but no. but um, but uh, but they're 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 extraordinary, extraordinary creatures. So um yeah, yeah. deep out of the vulture kingdom. Yeah. <laughs> I was this with earlier on, I'll tell you because it made me laugh. A wasp flew in, but it, not a not a regular yellow jacket wasp, but a little skinny wasp that looked more like an ant. It flew in into the bathroom um, and I was brushing my teeth and I watched this wasp, but it was carrying something and it dropped it. And it was a spider that it was carrying. And I knew that it was um, going, it was using the spider to lay eggs in to feed its, its, its larvae, you know, one of those sort of wasps. And I shouted at it and I said, no. You're not bringing that in here. You've got to take it outside. And the wasp stopped <laughs> and I could feel it looking at me. And it turned around and took the spider out. And it just made me laugh <laughs> so much because it was it wasn't I wasn't thinking about communicating with an animal. It just said, no, you're not bringing that in here. You take that outside. <laughs> it did immediately. And I thought, oh, 
we're we're at that place now where we are truly um back in communication with the world around us and that's never not been possible but because the fields of density and the fields of separation have been so uh so locked in it's been that much more tricky that much more difficult and now i think um we're in a state where all of the magic becomes much much more possible and i think this coming equinox which is next wednesday um maybe not for the whole of, i think west coast in the us it's it's late on tuesday night it's late on tuesday night or wednesday i can never quite remember um <laughs> it, Wednesday don't morning. ask me i won't know i won't know it's at wednesday all wednesday morning it's wednesday morning no no sorry i've got this completely wrong it's saturday saturday the 23rd um uh in the morning in europe and i think late on friday night in um on the west coast this coming equinox is a really big shift point into a deeper level of magic and that will be paralleled by a deeper level of chaos on the surface. So you get to choose where you focus your attention. You can focus into the chaos and be completely swamped by that. Or you can focus into the other dimensions, the deeper dimensions, and be swamped by the magic. Because that's that's what we came here for this time around, is to bring that back to the surface and to live that and to... Um, help to remind or to create a strong resonant field of that so others get to feel it and live it too. Um, because it is done more by how we live and what we resonate and radiate rather than what we, you know, we can't, you can't tell people about this. I mean, you can, but trying to persuade somebody about it, it doesn't work as much as. No, it doesn't, you know, does it? You know? <laughs> So, yes, but um, also not to be um, Pollyanna and stick your head in the sand about what's actually going on and being perpetrated uh, is also important. Um, yeah, that's actually a great segue, a great segue to my next um, story to share with you about the heart field. So I want to start by by saying, especially to those new listeners to this kind of stuff, because a lot of times I can see it in their face. They're like, what are you talking about? You know, what are you talking about? Energy and fields and, and expansion of the heart. You know, for a lot of people who are just trying to understand some of this, those are just words. They yeah. they just don't really mean anything. And so sometimes uh, some stories like the one I'm going to share right now um, are helpful in understanding what that feels like. You know, it's not just words. It's not just try to do this and expand your heart, and release the thing, you know, and people are just like, they're just words to me. So I'm going to talk about a real life event. This, this happened the 26th, I think of August. I, I went to a health freedom rally put on by Kansans <clears throat> freedom for health here in Kansas. And one of the speakers, uh, the keynote speaker, was uh, Robert Kennedy Jr. Now, uh, I got to see him for the first time, extraordinarily so, in the summer of 2020. And for those of you who may have remembered, uh, uh, or maybe those of you who haven't remembered how crazy the summer of 2020 was, that same people put it on as the same kind of event. Um, we had to keep the venue of this place, meaning we, the people who were putting it on, kept the the venue of it secret for like until 36 hours before the event. I mean, those that's just crazy, right? Think about it. They had, had you know, we can't let everyone know what, where it's going to be until the last minute because we'll all let you imagine why, you know, in summer of 2020 uh, for all of the forces that didn't want such a thing to be happening. But uh, when we got there, it was extraordinary in 2020 because nobody's face was covered except for one vendor. I mean, the place held like it, uh, it was a maximum, it was outdoor, indoor a little bit, but out, mostly outdoor venue. Um, the I think the maximum was 250 people or something like that. And like they went three times the size. It was like, it, it just, people were so thrilled to be with other people um, and, and in that way, very 
normal way um, during that time. And I got to see him at that point and I hadn't seen him since. And I, I managed to uh, have care for dad and I could go up and see him and Del Big Tree and some other speakers. Uh, it was in Olathe, so near Kansas City, which m- more people know about Kansas City than Wichita, the, the town where I live, but near Kansas City. And um, it was, the whole event was amazing, as you might imagine, but I want to talk about one particular thing. So to step aside from the whole politics of this, because this is what I'm getting ready to tell you. This isn't a, a political uh story in any sort of way. And it's not even an endorsement story. Um, some some years I vote, some years I don't vote. I'm not registered. I'm a registered independent. Believe me, <laughs> even back when I was 18, I'm like, what do you mean I have to pick a team? I'm not picking a team. Independent. <laughs> anyway, um, at, at, the, at the point where he had finished his uh, keynote speech, speech. So, I mean, the vent is over. And as you know, these things always run long. The whole thing is run long and everything. And some of what had been spoken by my friends who I was there with, other people around, you could just feel it in the air. There were people who were like, I'm so glad I get to see him. I hope they don't kill him. Mm. Right. And, um, I think I can do this without crying. Uh, so uh, I and stop at the there at the moment. And I want just I, I want to do a whole video of this, but time. Uh, so, you know, I'm kind of thinking out loud as I'm sharing this a little bit. I'm one of those rare people who can remember my early childhood. I mean, I'm not talking about like when I was born when a week old or something like that. But I, you know, I remember walking for the first time in places. And, you know, I remember being a very, very small toddler. And one of my f- first and most extraordinarily powerful memories uh, was when uh, RFK Jr.'s uncle, who was the president at the time, um, John F. Kennedy, was uh, shot and murdered um, because of what the reaction was in in the household. And I remember what the TV looked like. It was giant, big black box with, and I remember the TV, you know, it was black and white TV. And I remember, I just remember the, you know, all of the people going to, you know, and it happened over and over again. And every, it was the same thing all the time. It was like this, it was covering of the mouth and looking in and what, and oh my God, and tears and tears. And I knew something big and horror. Of course, I did. how could I possibly have understood? I was a little more than two when this happened, but I, it's an absolute vivid memory. So set that aside. Um, and so everybody's thinking this while they're there and I, you know, every, any, any, thoughtful person would have these thoughts, you know, and there was security uh, not provided by our government who denied it to him, by the way, denied Mm -hmm. him, denied him security. So he brought his own and people had to clear out. And we literally had people check us over and look in our bags and stuff before we could come back in. Um, He finished his speech and he looked up and he said, and it was sold out, sold out crowd again. uh, uh, I, I don't know how many people, but more people than Possibly the fire department would be happy about being in that space. Um, he said, I I know that um, you all probably would want a, a selfie with me, you know. And he goes, we've done it with large crowds before. He said, not with crowds this large, but I bet we can do it. And he says, if you all just would stand up very quietly and and I won't have time to say anything to you. You can't talk to me. I can't sign anything. And and hand your phone to, and he had like, there was three people standing there and you handed your phone and it was just like clockwork. You got like five seconds. And everybody stood up. And during this time, the MC on stage leads a prayer. No. And leads... for his safety. If you can feel anything in your body right now, you've just connected to a huge heart field. Okay. No matter what you think about politics or whatever, if you 
feel anything, if you feel water in your eyes or buzzing on your body or stillness or something like that, th this is your heart field. You're feeling your heart field as, and then this thing, as everyone and everyone, it was quiet. It was so quiet. All you heard was the shuffling of feet. There was one tiny baby that was way in the back. Nobody was saying, people were whispering. It was so reverent. And look what this man did. Every person, and I got, because I have my camera on live, so I've got a tiny little gif of it. I, I hope to be able to share it in a video because he holds and he, he puts his physical heart field next to everybody's heart field. He's connecting actual hearts with everybody in that room who wants his safety. Yeah. And who can see that he cares about what's happening. And every photograph and every individual connection he made, the field got bigger and bigger and bigger. And it was one of the most extraordinary moments of my whole life going through that. And he got through, I don't know how many hundreds of people, I'm going to misquote it, but I, it might have been something like 700 people in, in, in no time. No time at all. As a matter of fact, how did that even happen? Some sort of time thing happened. Yeah. I mean, time him to get, isn't it? Yeah. In, in, in those sort yeah. of conditions, I think time warps. And he's doing... I mean, it, it sounds, um, I wouldn't often say this, but he's doing God's work in that sense, you know. Um, and so there's a there's a huge field of support for that. And, and it takes, you know, he, as well as everybody else, would be aware of the potential risk to his life. You know, he knows yeah. that his, that family are a target in a sense, you know. Yeah. Um, so... It takes amazing courage, the sort of courage that most people, most of us don't have to come up with to stand up and do what he's doing. You know, it's um, it is it is amazing. It really is. It's very, very beautiful. And. Uh, yeah. And I love. Do you know the work of Charles Eisenstein? Oh, yes, absolutely. He's, he's a part of of um, of of the advisory team with. Uh, with him now. So I get Charles Eisenstein's newsletters and, and he's another amazing, extraordinary man who writes really, really beautifully. And he's got that wonderful combination of deep sensitivity and deep intelligence that is so rare. And um, so his work is is extraordinary. And it's amazing to think that he's on on board um, in that in that team now. It, it's 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 very lovely. And it sort of gives you hope for the future of politics in in the world because again it's looking it's looking ridiculous isn't it it's looking so corrupt and so ugly and all of that ugliness coming to the surface and it's certainly happening in in this country too and it's odd you know we talk today you know on the anniversary of an of another day where there was a a huge um a huge mass assassination um, talking so you're talking about his uncle being murdered and there was a, a mass murder that happened on this day back in 2000 and 2001 huh? um, yeah. so we talk about you know it's it's uh, it is true what you say that it is important for us to know that field as well we have to know yeah what we're up against it's really yeah. important you can't deny that um but you can't spend your life focused on that um correct because you you make it more real you give it more power um and so to focus on the joy and the love and the beauty that's unfolding in these other dimensions that we're talking about here that's um well, that's over and over and over again for years now. That's what I have been told is my is my purpose. And for some people, it is their purpose to focus in those other um, landscapes, in a, those other territories, and to work there. And I'm I'm delighted that it isn't my job to work at, at that level. <laughs> my job is to work yeah. in, the, um, in the energetic realms rather than than the physical. And uh, 
and that's that. But I spent years looking at how all of that stuff works, the corruption and, and how the strings are pulled and how that it isn't based on this planet. It is an off-planetary um, scheme that has yeah. been working for many thousands of years. Uh, yep. And so it's a really big field. And you know, most people couldn't look at the depth of darkness that happens yep. uh, there. And um, and it's important that we are willing to to acknowledge the shadow, um, the shadow in ourselves and the shadow in the world so that we really know um, what human beings are capable of. And also, though, that we know uh, the other side of things. It's, you know, it's truly important that we, because we are polarity balancing devices, our energy field is a polarity balancing device, and you have to know the polarities in order to bring them to balance. And the heart is the space where those polarities dark and light get balanced and from that balance something new emerges something um beautiful can be born but we have to be willing to go to the extremes on either side of the spectrum i think and these times are pushing us into those extremes you know um so yeah yeah and your country certainly more than mine at the moment is living those extremes uh <laughs> yes both in terms of weather you know and politics and um yeah but yeah. it's but it's happening right across the world you know sure it is but yeah for those of you who were alive at all that's how old we are we have to say this david for those of you who are alive uh you know september 11th 2001 if you remember where and how you first heard about what happened this day to the Twin Towers and Building 6 and, and the other uh, events that happened at the Pentagon in, in um, Pennsylvania, uh, if you can re recall the feeling that came up in your body then, uh, that feeling is like the, the opposite of the heart feeling. Um, and it it actually has a name. It's called louche. And it's actually food. And that is a food that is the number one biggest release of louche food for those uh, realms that David is speaking of. And they just lapped it up. And we gave it to them. We gave it to them. Of course, we didn't know. Of course, you know, we're being used and, and abused. But let's set that aside and get back to the, and I'm going to let you go really soon, not only because I've had a lot of your time, uh, but I, I'm going to have to go myself here momentarily. But I, let's take it back to, again, to RFK Jr. Because I, I, I want to say, if you haven't, and meaning you or anyone listening, if you haven't listened to some of his interviews, particularly about his overcoming addiction uh, mm. interviews. He talks about um, going through the the twelve steps and um, really talking to people who've beaten addiction and how and why. And he was told he tells the story quite often. He was told that those who seem to have the best uh, outcome, excuse me, side eat one of my own hairs there at the moment uh, with uh, addiction are those who believe in a higher power, who believe in God. And he he tells the story this way. He says, well, he wasn't sure he believed in God, so he wasn't sure how he was going to make that happen. And so he decided that, and somebody, I guess, advised him to, to just decide to fake it, like just to pretend or begin to live his life as if there was a God. And then as he walked through life like that, it became it became him. So he it, it, he's an extraordinarily sensitive, amazing thinking man uh, and move has moved through so many difficulties. Uh, I mean, you know, he, his own father was murdered uh, and he's stepping into this. His father, his uncle, he knows what he's stepping into. I also think he knows something he's not telling anybody. And I hope it's good. I, mean, I don't know what it is, but I can look at him thinking that man knows way more than he is. He's letting on um, and it'll be interesting to watch. But um, thank you for allowing me to share that 
story with you and for everything that you are to me and others on the planet. And um, I just feel so invigorated after connecting with you, both pre your event, during your event, last night in dreams and ending this morning, which is really lovely on a day of all days to start uh, in a really positive uh way rather than a morose and um you know desperate and uh negative way i get to start my day with you thank you oh candace it's so um it's such a joy to connect with you again and we must do this more often not necessarily as a as a public thing but but just uh just connecting yeah. chatting for ourselves because it's yeah. uh but yeah i've missed you and it is really really I've missed you to um to uh, to chat with you and to see you looking so well too, which is which is great, huh? which is lovely. <laughs> it's been hard since I lost Kim. You know, uh, my day was built around Kim, and I have not completely replaced Kim. Uh, I've got. Oh, and I really of- felt that when you wrote about it, it was a, it was a shock. I felt the shock of that of that um, of that accident and that that passing. It's uh, yeah, so just crazy too. You know, I mean, she would say things to me like. I don't know what I how I'm going to handle it when your dad passes. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Oh, David, thank you so so much. Um, I love you. Yeah, I love you too. And it's been a a joy and a pleasure. And lots of love to everybody listening. Thank you for listening. If you've made it this far. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, um, it's good. Yeah, it's going to be quite a haul. There are links below. Um, Thanks for watching. You take care. Bye bye.